Hey, Chris from Codify Academy here. In this video, I want to review a few of the best practices when we're writing HTML. So when we're talking about coding and best practices, we're usually talking about keeping our code lean, that means as little as possible, and well organized so we can change it later. So the first best practice we're going to look at is how to write HTML so it's standard compliant markup. In plain English, this just means without syntax errors. Even though our content might be showing up in a browser, it doesn't necessarily mean it's semantically correct. We can use an HTML validator to make sure our code is free of errors. And when it is free of errors, that means your HTML is standard compliant markup. We need to pay close attention when we're writing HTML to make sure we close all elements properly. We use IDs and classes like they're supposed to be used, and we're always validating our code. In this bad code example on the top, there's a few errors here. We can see that they're using the same ID attribute value more than once. A P tag before the nested element was closed, and there's another missing closing tag. So hopefully you're pretty comfortable spotting these. We should use the class attribute when we're styling multiple elements the same way. Make sure that we close tags that are nested inside of other tags before closing the parent tag. And don't forget the closing tag for the majority of those elements that require it. Second one up is making use of semantic elements. Because there are so many elements, using the right one at the right time can be hard. If we use the correct semantic elements, it's gonna help our website show up sooner inside of a search engine like Google. Right now, this isn't actually a huge deal. Typically in a job though, there's going to be a routine code review, and this is just where they make sure that your code is properly semantic. Is it easily read by search engines? In our example here, the HTML doesn't have proper heading or paragraph elements, but instead it just uses these meaningless elements to style and group content together. But instead, if we use an H1 and a P tag, this content is going to be more semantic. The text inside of your heading one element will actually become the text that is searchable within a search engine. Number three, we have using proper document structure. Now HTML is pretty forgiving. And if you leave out the doc type or head or body elements, it will actually show up in the browser, but it might not show up the same way in all browsers. So we want to make sure that when we are writing HTML in a .html file, that it includes the doc type HTML, the HTML tag, the head and the body elements. Remember, we've already set this up in our template folder. Number four we have is keeping our syntax organized. As your page grows, it becomes more of a task to manage your HTML. There are a few rules that we can follow that are going to help keep your syntax clean and our code organized. Make sure to use lowercase letters within elements, attributes, and values. Indent nested elements. Only use double quotes. Remove the forward slash from any void tag, those self-closing tags. And if the value in an attribute is equal to true, then we can just leave it off because it's a default. So we can see here, hidden is actually equal to true, so we'll just leave it off. And if you follow these rules, your code is going to be neat and legible. Number five we have is using practical ID and class values. So in order to create a good ID or class value, they need to relate to the content that they wrap. In our bad code here, we see a value of red, but this describes the presentation of our content. And if we change any styles, it won't make sense anymore. So for this example, we should replace the value of red with the value of alert because that describes the content. Be sure to use classes and IDs to describe the content you want to style. Number six is using alternative text attributes on images. Make sure you have an alt attribute for any image. These things called screen readers will use that value to provide context for images for those that can't see them. The attribute value should be a good description of what the image contains. And if any image doesn't provide relevance to the site, you can just leave the value blank so the screen reader ignores it instead of reading the name of the image file. Additionally, if an image doesn't have a meaningful value for a website, Try to include it as a CSS background image if possible and not as an IMG element. Number seven is separating content from your style. So please, please, please never use an inline style in HTML. It will cause the site to load longer. It becomes more difficult to maintain. And in general, it just causes a huge headache for future you and other developers that are going to look at your code. Just use an external style sheet 
with classes to target elements you want to style. Number eight is avoiding overusing div elements. It's very common for developers to use too many divs when they're styling content. This won't break the website. It will, however, cause confusion about which div is for which style. Here we have three classes on three separate divs when we could use more semantic code to avoid the overuse of divs. We want to try to use HTML5 elements where we can or use multiple classes on elements for style. That's it for now. I recommend that you post these best practices somewhere where you can see them often until you get really good at following them.